Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with a Wargaming in Miniature video. In this video, we are going to continue on with our Painting 101 tutorial series. And in this video, this is post base coat dipping and coating. So now we're going into the second half of the painting. Um, for lack of a better term, I'm going to call it detailing, but uh, it's not really super detailed. What I'm doing is I'm just touching up or hitting some things that need to be finished. Basically, a second half of the second half of the painting process. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to revisit our lipstick red because uh, I. I want to hit the uh, the plumes and the um, cords on the grenadiers, uh, and well, actually, just the cords on the grenadiers. But I also want to hit the voltigeers cuffs because uh, I neglected to hit the cuffs. I neglected to hit the cuffs the last time. It was an oversight. Um, I was thinking that the cuffs were going to be very similar to plume or the collar, but it wound up actually not being. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure that I got the cuffs on all these voltigeers in red. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on to the voltigeers, I'm sorry, the grenadiers cords. Uh, but this is the figure we've been working with. So let's, I'll be right back when I go to those. All right, now that we're going to go ahead and paint the uh, cords on these models, I'm just going to do one uh, because this is not our original model that we had planned to uh, paint for. I'm using a fairly detailed brush to get into the cords. And I also did not water down my red as much as the base coat. I didn't want it to run at all. Cord does drape in the back as well. See it the focus. All right, now let me do these other three guys and then I'll be right back. All right, and I also went ahead and did the streamers. So you got the uh, red, white, and blue uh, on the streamers as well. So now, um, this is something that I do after I dip, of course. I go through each of my models uh, when I, if I revisit a color like I'm doing now, and I just make sure that I didn't make any mistakes on any of the models, and if I did, I go through and I touch it up. So I'm looking through here, and I don't see anything that needs a little extra red. So then I put it off to the side. Go through the next models. Okay, when I get done double checking everything, I'll be right back. 
Okay, so the next color we're going to work with is our yellow. Now what we're going to do is we're going to paint all the plumes uh, and the cuffs and, and uh, the cuffs and uh, epaulets of the lights as well as the drum. All right, so let's go ahead and get in here. that up. Let's be good for the epaulets. All right, so here we go with the collars. Okay, let's just do one of these guys. Okay. Collars, or actually, he doesn't have epaulets, so I got to do the epaulets on this guy. collar his epaulets and I plan to switch brushes to do the plumes because this brush is too small so we jump with a much bigger brush We're not doing the cords yellow. We're going to be doing the cords in green. Okay, so once I get all the epaulets and plumes done, we'll get we'll be right back. All right, now what we're doing is we're going to go ahead and paint the drum body yellow. Now you can use a larger brush than this. This is just the brush that I had already with the epaulets. But uh, the reason why you might want to use a larger brush is so that you can get in there a lot faster. But uh, because it doesn't matter if you get on the cords or not because I'm going to go back and highlight the cords with white anyway. that makes sense so so it's okay again if you do a little over painting I'm just trying not to that's all And then you got a yellow drum. Simple, simple, simple. All right, so there's not a whole lot of yellow. So let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next color. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to revisit the black again because what we're going to do is we're going to paint the barrels. Um, and we're going to go back to our original figure and we're going to start painting barrels uh, and bayonets. And what this will allow, the reason why I'm painting it black, it'll allow me to paint it metallic and have the metal, it'll make the metal look better. And I also, not only are we doing the barrel like so, but I also kind of want to 
just touch up the top of the shakos and and paint the handles um, I neglected to paint the handles last time because I was going to paint them brass but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and paint them now because brass will stick on black a lot better just like metallic silver just like gold okay that looks good and that's really all I need to do is the barrels and the handles and okay when I get these done I'll be right back all right the next color we're going to use is clover what I'm going to use that for obviously is the tips of the plumes and the cords Okay, so now I just painted the tips because uh, the two-tone effect was very common. Now I'm going to take the, the green and paint the cords. Now I'm only going to do the first one. awesome so plume cords loving it okay let me finish these guys and i'll be right back all right so the next thing is i'm just going to paint some plumes on one of the companies which is one stand uh the neon purple so i tried to squeeze out the little the, the littlest amount and i'm just going to grab any one of these stands that are not the scent Basically, what am I saying? Not the flank companies, but the center companies. I'm going to make one of them purple. Okay, simple enough. Just purple plumes. All right. Now I'm going to do one in baby blue and one in orange, and then I'll be right back. 
All right, so the next color we're going to use is, you can't see it, it's white. I'm using the wicker white. I don't want it to be pure white or bright white. We're just going to use wicker. But I didn't think I wanted to use as old as antique white. Okay, so now um, the white is going to be on pretty much every figure. We've got to touch up almost everything. But... <clears throat> My focus is going to be on the straps, uh, anywhere that paint might have got off the boot onto the pant legs or flesh, anything like that. Or if I overpainted any of the blue, I'm going to touch that up. And also any of the Shakos like this one that has cords. If they have cords, I'm going to paint them. All right, so let's go ahead and, oh yeah, and the cords on the... Um, swords oh yeah well mm, yeah okay so <clears throat> let's get started on this guy All right, and that's what I'm going to do with the rest of them. So once they get everybody done, we'll be back. <clears throat> All right, guys, now what we're going to do is we're going to use the real brown on the figures. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to use the real brown for the hair of the models. Uh, so we're going to take, like you can see, this model has like white hair. Uh, just use a fine tip brush, watered down real brown so that it uh, is kind of runny and then let it go into the hair so that there you go can you see that I don't know if I've got it focused well but really that's it just the dark brown or real brown not not dark brown and that's given everybody the same color of hair if you want to um, make a variation like some have black hair some have brown hair and so forth and just do that uh, but be sure to water it down a little bit so that you'll get the hair highlights where they'll stand out um, on the model not that anybody's really going to see that but uh, if somebody goes in and starts looking they'll see they'll go wow he's got all the little hairs highlighted 
All right, so I did that. Now, once I get all the hair done, I'll be right back. All right, now there's something we're still in the real brown, but there is something I want to uh, do uh, in addition to the hair. Uh, it is still hair, but it's facial hair. So I'm going to go through each model, and like this one right here, he's got a mustache. So I really need to, you know what? I need to fix the flesh before I paint the mustache. Okay, so we'll hold on to this brown, and then we'll get a very small drop of flesh, and I'll go over every model uh, just to make sure that there's no overpainting onto the flesh. Barely any. Okay, let's scoot these models. Because I could tell right here on this model, the red collar had overpainted onto his chin. So I wanted to fix that. There we go. Super easy. All right, let me fix the flesh and then I'll be right back. All right, I went through and touched up all the faces. So now uh, we're going to be able to do mustache. Uh, mustache is very important. You don't want to forget it on Napoleonic figures anyway because it was a symbol of your manhood and your bravery. So you want to make sure you get your mustache in there. Um, also, I use the flesh not only to correct any overpainting, but also just to kind of highlight the nose. Yep, I touched the nose with flesh to bring it out, bring out, to darken it up a little bit. Because it looked like it was getting a little light from being the, the flesh being thinned out too much. I think all these grenadiers have mustaches. Yep. Mustaches. All right, let me finish the mustaches and I'll be right back. All right, so now we're going to move on to the metallic gunmetal gray. That's going to be for the barrels, the swords, the bayonets, and such. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our test figure here. And what we're going to do here is just coat the black part. It doesn't even have to be doesn't even have to be a full coat. You can even let the black shine through because it actually looks more like iron that way or steel. Okay, so the bayonet covered. Now let's do the barrel. That's it. That's as simple as it gets. All right, let me do the rest, and I'll be right back. Okay, here's a little tidbit while I'm painting. Um, you want to make sure your armor or your weapons or your barrels or your swords are all black first, right? I mean, you've already heard that. Uh, now, one of the reasons why you do that is uh, the metallic paint sticks or shows better on top of black. But what you also gain the advantage of is uh, by not painting all the way to the edge of whatever item you're painting, you get like this free black line that goes all the way around the metal. Uh, if you have something like chain mail or something like that in your painting, I would recommend dry brushing the metal on, leaving black inside all of the rings. That way your chain mail looks like rings. All right, let me finish. I'll be right back. All right, now what we're doing is we're moving on to pure gold. Here it is, pure gold. Uh, I prefer to use gold instead of brass. 
the more it's more vibrant um, we're going to use a very small fine tip brush and what we're going to do is we're going to paint the plates in front of the shakos uh, we're also going to paint any other items that are gold like the handles on the swords and the um, chin straps and the tips of the sheaths the, the, the top of the sheath where your sword goes in and the tip of the sheath all had brass caps uh, so that's going to be on there as well there's this chin strap uh, not every one of these have these uh, hanging chin straps. Some of them are actually really tight to the face. Um, I, I felt like it didn't really give me an advantage uh, in the appearance of the model to actually paint the ones that are laying on someone's chin. But the ones hanging down were obviously uh, needed to be painted. Now, some of these ammo cans or ammo bags have uh, the, the Napoleon N on the back and so I went through and I painted the ends uh, what else we need we need to do the sword handle okay it looks like I'm gonna do the ends all first there's only a couple of them with ends some of the other ones just have little uh, pins or divots or something like that and so I didn't bother painting those uh, some have like um, winged ornaments I painted those okay there's the tip of the sword you got to paint that you know what I was talking about the sword tips and then the uh, the hilt and the quillions, which is the, basically the handle and the ha and the hand guard of the of the swords. All right, just that simple. All right, so let me finish these guys, and then I'll be right back. And next, we're going to go ahead and use a very small amount of this antique white. Uh, the antique white is a lot like bleached bone. It's kind of a yellowish color. But what we're going to do is we're going to just touch up uh, various things um, on the models that I wanted it to be a little bit off-white like the, there's a leg pad that the drummer has that uh, protects his leg versus the, the, the drum rubbing up against his leg. So I'm going to paint that pad. And the cloth hanging from the bottom of the drum. And then I'm also going to paint uh, some of the, around the swords, they have these like uh, cords that hang from the uh, hilt. I'm gonna paint those a little, a little off-white. The Grenadiers and the Voltigeers, they have their own painted ribbons, or uh, I should say cords. The Voltigeers have green ones, of course, and the Grenadiers have red ones. So I'm just putting, um, and I'll also use this if I see anything that just needs, like any dark pants or something like that that need to be touched up. I'll hit that as well. Okay, so when I'm done with this color, I'll be right back.
All right, now before I forget, there is one other place that I use this off-white, uh, the antique white. I use it for the slings on the muskets. Uh, it's a really simple technique. It's basically just a straight line down. And I do it on all the muskets. All right, when I get all the muskets done, I'll be right back. All right, and that was it. Now, thank you for coming out and checking out the this part of the detailing process. Uh, in the next video, we're going to do some black lining. Uh, let me go ahead and show you some of these figures. I'm going to go ahead and adjust the focus so you can see them uh, before we close this video out. And this is how they stand right now before we do any of the black lining. There we go. Get some focus adjustments here. There we go. Uh, right now they st still seem a little bit dirty, okay? But we haven't actually touched up the white pants and stuff like that just yet. We've done a little bit of that, but uh, you actually have to do multiple layers uh, of paint just to get everything the way you want it. Uh, but yeah, these, these figures look really good. I'm, I'm really impressed so far. Uh, and then in the next video, we'll do some black lining and and some fixing. All right. Well, thanks for coming out checking this video. Check out the next one, and I'll see you then.